Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm a graphic designer based in Melbourne. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create cartoons on Adobe Illustrator by pretty much tracing over all ready images and combining others. And I'm also going to explain how to create a drip effect. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, what you wanna do is pick two photos that you generally wanna combine. You can pick one that you wanna just completely trace, but sometimes I like to have different facial expressions and body positioning within my one end result character. I've got this image of Winnie the Pooh's face and this image of his body. What you kind of wanna do straight up is just replace the head, well, whatever body part you're actually working with, bring the opacity down and you can kind of line it up and just see where it's gonna kind of match. And this will help us with our line art later on. So once that's lined up, what you wanna do is actually lock these two layers and you wanna get another separate layer. You can name this one line art. You wanna make sure that both of these layers are actually somewhat transparent, even if it's just a little bit. This way you'll be able to see your black lines on top much easier. So coming, so coming back into our line art layer, what we're gonna do, again, grab our pen tool, and we're just gonna to start to trace over areas of the body. Now, you can pick whatever stroke weight you want. Obviously, you wanna make your line art black. It can be whatever color you'd like, but I usually pick a black color, so it's bold. For this example, I'm probably gonna go with a stroke weight of four. You just wanna trace over all of the areas that are expressing lines. So I'm gonna do this right now. Before I get stuck into it, something that I also like to do is use the variable width tool to create perspective uh, in areas where things might join. So for example, I'm gonna create another line here. And instead of joining these two lines, I'm gonna make this one this type of variable width. I'm actually gonna reverse it. And now I'm gonna pick, pick my direct selection tool, which is your white arrow. Uh, click this anchor point and just drag it over the top. Now, sometimes they might not actually join up exactly. So you'll get something like this. What you have to do is just grab uh, the little handle and just curve it over so it's completely flat. And uh, that's how you get that kind of seamless connection of your lines. So I'm gonna be using this process to outline the whole image so far. So let's do that right now. So as you can see, we've finished our line work. I think it's looking pretty clean and tidy. Now, before we move into the actual coloring aspect, you will notice that a lot of my lines are actually overlapping each other. Now that's completely okay. I've done this uh, to make things a little bit easier when I go to clean up the artwork after. This is what I mean by this. If we highlight all of our line work and then come over to our object, expand appearance, expand, click okay, and you'll now see that our strokes have turned into actual shapes. If I come over to my Pathfinder menu, you can find this over in window, Pathfinder and click the divide tool. This is actually gonna chop up all the different stuff. And what I'm going to do now is actually use my direct selection tool again to select individual aspects that are actually coming over and overlapping. So now what I'm gonna do is just essentially tidy up all of these areas where things are overlapping. For example, over here, as you can see areas like this over here and there, and you can see that it's starting to really tidy itself up now. So I'm gonna do this now, and then we're gonna move over to stage three. Okay, so overall, the line art is actually looking really clean now. So in areas like this, I actually like to draw kind of like a fill-in uh, of the corners, uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit more combined and natural as opposed to two lines combining. There is an easier way to do this without using your pen tool, although you can use that method. What I like to do is actually come over, grab your wand tool, change the tolerance to one, and then select the blacks and use your Unite panel on your Pathfinder, uh, and that'll actually combine all the shapes. Then what you wanna do is you can actually use your direct selection tool to highlight areas and just drag them in. Now this won't work for all of them, uh, only for some and in some other areas you might need your pen tool to create curves. Like for example, if I don't want this one to be exactly round, uh, maybe I want it to like start from up here and end down here, I can create a manual curve. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this kind of stuff. Before we get into the coloring, if you wanna add a drip effect, this is the stage that you're gonna do it in. First things first, let's unlock this layer behind us and drag them over here. In my case, I'm probably 
probably gonna add the drips of the honey coming off his hand and we can use this as an example for the rest of his body. So what I'm gonna do is actually draw some more lines, make sure we're doing it in our line art layer, draw some more lines around and really try and emulate the flow of the drips. I like to use this variable width tool here, although you can use other ones like this, increasing the stroke, you'll see you get that nice effect. If I come down and apply that same idea that I did before, you get this nice overlapping appearance. Right now, our body is an actual shape, whereas our drips are lines. So what you wanna do is I'd suggest to draw all of your drips first and then expand these, select everything, and then pathfind them uh, again. If they're overlapping like they are here, then you'll be able to delete whatever's inside. And now it looks like the honey's just dripping off his elbow. Let's say I wanted to make it look like the drip was coming from behind the character and on top of the other side of the body, uh, let's say over on his foot over here. What I'm gonna do is the same thing, draw your drip, maybe something like this. I'll show you another variation of drip that I like to do. You can make it come down, go over the top and come back around up like that maybe. Increase the stroke, make it a variable width that you're happy with. Then what I like to do is sometimes actually create another one on the inside so it looks like it's kind of detaching from its original drip. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come over to object, expand appearance, and we're gonna select everything and chop it up. So I want it to look like it's coming off that section, but in this section over here, I want it to look like it's coming from around his body. So this is how we do that. We delete this line here because that's what's making it look like it's coming on the front. We're then gonna come over here and maybe just draw a line like this and chop it there. Now, if we delete this interior one here, and curve this one, it'll actually look like the honey's dripping over the top here, but underneath there. So now I'm gonna apply this method to everywhere that I wanna add drips. And by the end of it, we should have a complete whole shape that we can then add color to. I've added some drip effects to his skin, to the honey bowl, to his face, and it's looking great. Now what we wanna do is add some color to the artwork. Grab your magic wand tool, which is also known as Y on the keyboard as a shortcut, and we'll select just the black color again. We're gonna copy this, Command C, and we're gonna create another layer. Go back into your line art layer, grab a square, and just drag it over the whole thing. Make this a specific color that you want. I'm gonna select this square and use my eyedropper tool to select a nice yellow that I'm happy with, select everything once again, make sure it's only just your line art and the shape, and then use the divide tool from the Pathfinder panel. Use your direct selection tool to clear the excess, and then go back into your top line art layer, and you can just click Control, Shift, V or Command Shift V if you're on Mac and that'll paste the line up back on top. Now let's lock this top layer. Using your direct selection tool, if you have individual shapes, you can get away with selecting them and coloring them in like this. But in some areas you'll see that it'll actually color in some other areas that aren't meant to be that color. This is how you get around that quickly. You just use your pen tool. You can draw a line just across the two points where the color is actually seeping in. Select your line and that shape and click divide again. We love the Pathfinder. And now you've got this as one singular shape. What you want to do now is just basically give the artwork highlights and shadows. Let's say we want to do the ear over here. Um, I'm going to click on this point here. Make sure you're clicking on the anchor points. Um, I'm going to curve it around and come back down to here again, back onto that anchor point. And if we turn it into a line or a stroke, we select the stroke and the shape and we divide this. Now I can actually, again, using my direct selection tool, select it and change it to a little bit more of a shadow. So I'm gonna do this and then hopefully by the end of it, we'll have some pretty neat looking artwork. And there you have it guys, it's finished. Uh, I think it looks really good. I've only really gone with two to three different shades darker and one or two different shades brighter for the highlights. And as you can see, it creates a really nice contrast in the overall design. I hope you've learned something from this quick little tutorial guys. It's how I create my vector illustrations. It's quite efficient and effective and easy to do. 
Not only that, but I think it's awesome that you can combine different photos to create a character position that you guys want as opposed to just having to find an image off the internet and having to trace it. It allows for a little bit more creativity there. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. I really do hope you've learned something. And if you try something like this uh, and post it to Instagram, make sure to tag me at CK Creative or use the hashtag Vector with CK. I'd love to see them all and share them on my Instagram as well. Other than that, guys, that's it from me today, and I will see you in the next one.